All right, so that's some research in multi-touch. We have uh, a couple of minutes, so I wanted to show you one really fun project um, in, the, in the realm of crowdsourcing. So who in the room has heard of Mechanical Turk? Raise your hand. All right, not that many people. So let me take two steps back then. Mechanical Turk, this was um, a chess playing machine from the 18th century that was a robot that seemingly could beat um, even good human players at chess. Now, how would they build a robot, a chess playing robot, back in the 18th century? Well, it turns out it wasn't a robot after all. There was a small person hidden in the cabinet that could look and see you know, the state of the board and then with magnets move pieces around. <laughs> all right, that was the old Mechanical Turk. The new Mechanical Turk is um, we're seeing a change in the way virtual work happens online. More and more work is happening online. So we now have virtual labor markets like Amazon Mechanical Turk, inspired by the earlier robot, that uses small contributions from people to solve tasks that algorithms can't do on their own. So here are a couple of tasks. For example, um, you can, for two cents, copy text from a business card. Um, or for two dollars, manage a calendar. So typical tasks here are things that are really hard for artificial intelligence algorithms nowadays, but that are really easy for almost any person. So image labeling, what's in this image? Um, spam detection, is this comment from a bot or does it actually contribute to the discussion? Business listing verification, does this business still exist or have they gone out of business? Or OCR, handwriting recognition. This is a really bad quality picture. Can you just type what's written in this picture? Now, right now, online platforms are really good for solving these kinds of tasks that require just basic human cognition. But there's a separate question. What if you have these small tasks that experts can do? Experts right now don't go onto these platforms to, for five cents, tell you how to solve a differential equation. They're busy with their jobs. They, you know, you may have to pay them a lot more. So we had this research question of how can we get expert small tasks done by crowdsourcing? And our idea was maybe we can just leverage local experts, people who are already experts in a particular location. So what's a typical expert task? Well, here's one that any teacher um, will understand. Exam grading. Many, many computer science classes at Berkeley right now have 300, 500, 600 students right now. Grading 600 exams is a daunting task, especially when the exam is written. At the same time, you can't just put this online because people have to have knowledge about computer science principles to be able to grade these exams. So we had the idea to try out peer grading, having students grade other students' exams. What would the incentive be? Well, we thought, can we get students to grade other students' exams in return for snacks? <laughs> Sounds like a crazy idea. Um, so what we did is we actually found a vending machine, we gutted it, stripped all the analog electronics, and put a touchscreen interface inside. And so you would start by scanning your ID so we could detect people who uh, try to spam or trick the system. You'd then fill out some questions. And then we'd ask you to grade exams. Well, we showed you the question. We showed you the answer key and a cropped uh, piece of a scan of someone's image. Uh, from, from a handwritten exam. And then you had a slider to assign points. So here's how that would look. So you'd read a question, assign points, submit your answer. You'd now get another credit. And you would work through questions until you had enough credits to then make your selection. and vend your item. 
So as in other uh, projects, there was a big system building um, component. So we had some help from a mechanical engineer, and then we used, you know, um, we used microcontrollers um, to control all the vent motors that are in this machine. But all of this building was really to get at a question, and that is, is this type of grading any good? So for that, we deployed the machine in Soda Hall. And in one week, we graded almost 8,000 exam answers for about $200 in candy. So we knew we could get volume. Now can we get quality? And this is once again where we go back to experimental design. How do you construct an experiment to afterwards say with certainty um, whether your design worked or not? So we defined a gold standard where we hired 11 expert graders to grade the same set of exams. And then we also took that same set of exams and put it online on Mechanical Turk. And that now allows us to compare, compare to the gold standard how good is the machine, how good are online workers. And the answer was, well, this was a five-point scale. If people chose randomly, expected agreement would be 20%. People online were, were significantly worse than chance. They were systematically wrong because that's how exams are written, right? If you don't really know what the question is about, you're going to get it wrong. However, on our machine, we had about 84 uh, percent agreement with experts, with PhD level students. Now the question is, what does that mean? How is that compared to one TA? Well, I told you we took 11 TAs. So now we can analyze redundancy. How good is one TA compared to all 11 TAs? How good are two TAs? How good is one person on the vending machine? How good are three people on the vending machine? And so the interesting uh, result was, if you added more people on Mechanical Turk, the results just kept getting worse. We just got more noise. However, if you added redundancy on the vending machine, you actually got to be better than a single expert at 30% less cost. All right, this is, these are just two projects from a whole raft of a dozen or more. Uh, if you're interested, just go to my website, cs.berkeley.edu slash tilde bjorn.